we may never see this again, so watch closely. Near tactical perfection from Movistar today in Criterium de Dauphiné, stage six. We're getting into the high mountains on the weekend, but today it's more of a medium mountain finish, six and a half Ks uphill. We've got some longer climbs in the middle of the Col de Port, 167 Ks long, and it shouldn't be too difficult for the GC teams to control the breakaway on a stage like this. The first 100 Ks though, pancake flat and this finish is a bit of a tricky one as i said basically a 6k climb with a false flat section and descent in the middle and then it flattens off at the end albrelli still in the points jersey as well as perstelberger in the yellow jersey a really large breakaway went up the road a furious first hour of racing footage started really late but it seems that Bora Hansgrohe were interested in chasing and pacing that break, at least for some of the time on the flat before the climbs. But when they did get to the Col de Port, and footage started here for some people in some territories with 33 k's to go, the break had a 90 second lead, and Jumbo Visma, one of the first GC teams to begin to pace, with their stagiaire hailing out of East Germany. Astana just behind him, and Julian Bernard, perhaps seeing the Movistar documentary last week, decides to fuga from the fuga. Bernard won a stage in Alpha. Maritima Duval with a similar profile in 2020. He attacked out of the breakaway chased by Matthew Holmes on Lotto Sudal. And Bernard was looking good actually. But Holmes is really keen to get those KOM points. It seems that he's chasing that jersey. Lawson Craddock also in that breakaway. Astana were pacing. They wanted to get Lushenko into the yellow jersey today. And they even sacrificed Aaron Baru's chances at the stage. I thought they might have let him try and go for the stage. That pace was too much on the Calder Port for Perstel, Berger, Asgren, and Cole Brelli was dropped there as well before Lawson Craddock the second day in a row the American on EF dropping Perez when he bridged across to Bernard and Matthew Holmes at the end of the Col de Port he broke away from the break and he was the last survivor from that breakaway cresting the Col de Port first with about a 30 second lead on the peloton it's looking really good Craddock but Movistar has started pacing really hard with Carlos Verona he paced on the descent as well and that pretty much stifled Lawson's Craddock's chances for this stage he had a 30 second lead going into the first First climbs. He crested the first one with now a 14 second lead. And I really want to labor on this point here with Louis Mankey's attacking out of the GC group when he sees Craddock's about to get caught. Carlos Verona pulls off. And this has been a consistent problem for Movistar when they bring three quote unquote leaders to races. We have Miguel Angel Lopez, Enric Mas, and Valverde in the group. Valverde is the quickest man in this group by far, given the flat finish we have. He came third at Flesh this year, and he finished second behind Cole Brelli in the reduced punch sprint in the flat this week already. But in previous races, even this year, we've seen after Carlos Verona pulls, this is Catalunya stage one to Calella, Movistar pulled to drop Peter Sagan on the climbs so that Valverde would be the quickest man in the flat sprint. They paced hard with Verona, and then they got to the flat section. Verona was cooked. They stopped. They pulled off. None of the other leaders were willing to work for Valverde. They lost control. Sanchez attacked, and they got nothing from the stage despite Verona and other riders on their team working so hard. But today, something different happened. Miguel Angel Lopez first. Now, I thought this was initially just a strong pull. I think he's marked by Jon Izaguirre on his wheel, the Astana Basque rider, then Sepp Kuz bridges to them, which means Ineos are going to close it down. Then David Godou went, and Ineos were looking a little bit vulnerable. Kwiatkowski wasn't looking fantastic today. Ter Gergenhardt was the rider with the best legs on their team. Port wasn't able to really close any gaps effectively. And Ineos, or Ter Gergenhardt, decided of his own accord at this point to try and bridge across to David Godou, rather than pull the group with them, particularly when Valverde is the favourite in this finish if the group comes to the line together Gagenhart attacks and no one's able to go onto his wheel initially except Stefan Kreuzweig begins to bridge across and this is what was curious to me from Ineos they didn't seem happy with the Kreuzweig situation going up the road and began to chase what would have been a group of Godou, Ter Gagenhart and Kreuzweig that would have formed then Sepp Kuf bridged across and Miguel Angel Lopez in a defensive role got into that group and so with two Ks to go there'd been attack after attack after attack it looked like the next strong one that went would be the stage winner there's a complete lack of control until Miguel Angel Lopez says enough is enough let's just win this goddamn race with Alejandro Valverde he gets on the front under the flag Rouge. He's got Thomas third wheel, Valverde fifth wheel on the wrong wheel. I mean, he should be on uh, Durant Thomas or Gagan Hart's wheel, but anyway, at least he's up there in the first five wheels. And Miguel Angel Lopez, the new signing for Team Movistar, sacrifices his ambitions and strings this 
out. This isn't 11% gradient. It's much flatter than that. They're going much quicker. And the pull he was able to do was incredible from like 1300, 1400 meters to go to about 350 meters when it wasn't that steep either to string out a GC bunch like this, completely prevent any other teams attacking and just getting Alejandro Valverde close enough to the finish line in the group so there could be a reduced group sprint. And with 400 meters to go, it starts to flatten off even more going down to 2%, 1% gradient. And Gagan Hart, we're not sure if this was supposed to be a lead out beginning for Grant Thomas, but Thomas loses his wheel. And I think it's because Thomas didn't have great legs today. And Valverde, because nothing can ever be easy, he's on the wrong wheel, he was on Coos's wheel, but then he lets Coos's wheel go to the left, even though Coos is closing down Gagan Hart. And he goes the long way around, around Thomas, to the right-hand side, Alejandro Valverde, with 300 meters to go. And this is what can be so frustrating about Movistar, because this wasn't even a perfect lead up from Valverde but if you get him within 400 meters with a finish like this in a GC group with no sprinters he is absolutely lethal and he chases down Tao Gagenhart comes around him in the last 50 meters and takes his first world tour level win in France since 2012. How crazy is it to think of that? And I just want to rewatch this one more time. He looks back to the two Bora riders, Conrad and Kelderman, says, I don't see Dos Cojones there. It was important that he was able to get Conrad off his wheel, deny that draft, so Conrad was working just as hard as he was in the last 250 meters, then gets up alongside Tag and Hart and hits him with the Kyrie Irving. Don't reach young blood, this my finish. I may be 42 years old and still incapable of reading a road book, but my kid is still damn strong. Massive win for Valverde. Big congratulations to Movistar and particularly Miguel Angel Lopez and Carlos Verona for their selfless efforts. But here's the stage results. Valverde over Gagan Hart, then Conrad and Kelderman third and fourth. Perhaps they could have done something differently there. Bora Hansgrohe, Mas, Kus, Lutschenko, Haig, Hermans and Kroosvike making up the top 10. Alexei Lutschenko goes into the yellow jersey. He wasn't able to contest for the stage win. He said his legs weren't good enough, but he does finish in that yellow jersey because Lucas Perstelberger was dropped. But the GC should heat up even more this weekend at the Criterium de Dauphiné. It's 171 k's, high mountains tomorrow, finishing in the planet at 2,064 meters, 17 k's at 7%. They've even got the Col de Prey, which is nasty before that. It's a finish that should suit Coos, Thomas, and Miguel Angel Lopez. Ineos took out Carapaz from their team before the Dauphiné. That may hurt them tomorrow if they're unable to control this race. And rides like Lopez, Guru, and Kuth have good legs. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below, do you think these videos are different since I moved to Europe? Are they better? Are they worse? Has anything changed? And let's see if we can hit 3,000 likes for this Valverde monster win in the Dauphiné today. But until tomorrow, ciao.